I always love the opportunity to talk history. We're going to do that a little bit, talking about the upcoming Texas Symposium here right now with Doug Dukes, retired Austin Police Lieutenant, and also James Harkins from the Texas General Land Office. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Again, previewing the uh, symposium coming up here in a few weeks. Just real quick, tell us what uh, people can expect. Well, the Save Texas History Symposium is having over 10 different speakers talking about different aspects of Texas and specifically Austin history during the 19th century. We're going to have everything from talking about the uh, destruction of the previous Capitol building to the construction of the current Capitol building, all the way to uh, the Guy Town, which was a red light district downtown. And we're mm -hmm. even going to talk about a very famous uh, murderer, the Serpent Girl Annihilator, which Doug is here to talk about. Yeah, you say famous. I mean, I, I confess I haven't, I don't, if I had heard about it, I don't remember as much about it. I think sometimes we're guilty because Austin has such a great history over the last 50 years, and it does, or 60 mm -hmm. years. We forget the rich history going back well over a century now. Well, of course, the, the city was founded, of course, in 1839, mm -hmm. and so, and even before that, it was referred to as Waterloo, mm -hmm. and so uh, there has been the opportunity and the chance. Uh, to have a lot of history here and a lot of things that you don't think about. Mm -hmm. Like uh, during 1840, they talk about being able to stand on the Capitol grounds but listen to Indians uh, sing songs and, and, and scream, you know, from their, from their homes. And uh, so it's, it's amazing once you get into some of the records. Well, talk a little bit about, again, it seems like this is almost was for last week, the Servant Girl Annihilator, a pretty scary, a terrifying time, really. Yes, this was, as a matter of fact, this is the 130th anniversary this year, uh, of that incident. Uh, there was a series of mysterious deaths uh, here in Austin from December 1884 through December of 1885. And uh, we had a total of, of seven women and one man killed during this 13-month period of time. Uh, the term, the servant girl annihilators, uh, is actually came from uh, the writer O. Henry, or William Porter, mm -hmm. uh, as his real name was. And uh, he's the one that's kind of kind of coined uh, that particular phrase. Uh, but even though it's called the servant girl annihilators or servant girl murders, only half of the people that were killed uh, were actually servant girls. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that it was not just uh, the deaths themselves, which were terrible enough, but during that whole period of time, there was a whole series of attacks of uh, what they called rocking houses, which you know people would throw rocks and stuff uh, at some homes, and uh, uh, so it was not just these murders, but a, a whole period of of uh, rather uh, the city and the whole. Uh, Central Texas area was actually kind of on edge through that whole period of time. And, and I'm sure an area of expertise or very big interest for you with your career in law enforcement. Talking about a time as the city was just coming up with a very small police force, maybe not used to thinking about handling a crime like this like we yeah, might the, have today. The city marshal, the chief of police at the time, uh, he had a, a total of 12 people. And uh, of those, those 12 people, uh, only five of them worked at any one time. And his assignments, one of them worked on Congress, of course, on foot. Mm -hmm. One of them was assigned to Pecan Street, what we now call Sixth Street. And so that left three uh, for the remainder of the city. And uh, the, even when the city started, we're talking, uh, you know, West Avenue, which is still there, uh, East Avenue, which is 35, from the river. Uh, to 15th. That was the, that was the original city limits. Mm -hmm. Now, by 1885, uh, the city was quite a bit bigger. And so you've got, other than these two downtown areas, you've got three officers to cover the remainder of it. So what you're saying is keeping up with growth in the city of Austin is nothing new. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Challenging absolutely. rapid growth. Yes. But again, in, in your dis talk and your discussion, just one of the things happening at the symposium that uh, a lot of people can come and, just, again, learn about history in a way maybe they hadn't before. Right. You can actually register online at SaveTexasHistory.org. There is uh, several different registration levels that people can sign up at. Uh, one of the most interesting things is not only do we have people talking about history, we also have live displays where people can actually go survey the Capitol grounds mm. the way that they would in the 19th century. Uh, if you're interested in genealogy, we're going to have people talking about that and how you can uh, learn more about genealogy as well as tours of the General Land Office archives, which if you've never taken a tour of the GLO archives, this is a great opportunity to learn where we've got over 400 years of history right next door to the Bullock uh, Museum. And we're going to invite people in, take a look around, 
and uh, learn a little bit more about the GLO as well. Yep, so many great maps too. Oh man! In all, all just all manner of history. If if you haven't gotten into the state's history, the cities, or maybe even your own personal family history with genealogy, a great mm -hmm. way to do that. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thank we you. Appreciate it. Thanks, sir. We're gonna be right back. Take one last.